Good evening. It is October 16th, 2012. This is Jason Horak, and we're taking a look underneath the 1987 Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. Um, what we're looking at at the moment is the EVTV Green uh, Warp 9 motor that I purchased from Jack Rickard um, while attending the Electric Vehicle Converters Convention uh, this September. And uh, my previous motor had broken much to the uh, entertainment of all the attendees and uh, I bought this one from Jack uh, just kind of on the spot in order to get my car back on the road and uh, Jesse Hale and a bunch of the conference attendees were very kind to help me get it all installed in the car and got me back up and running in no time flat. Um, I think it was about six hours from the time that the motor broke to when I was back on the road again so that was pretty amazing. Uh, so anyway, I drove it out there uh, for the drag race and the autocross and put it on the dyno and all that fun stuff that can be seen on the other videos. Um, and since it's been back here in New York, I've been driving the car every day. And it, again, it's my daily driver, so I've been running errands and um, you know, going to work and that kind of thing. Um, had an interesting event last, I think it was last Thursday. Um, I picked up my mother from the airport, which is about 45 miles north of here, um, and it's up Route 81, uh, which is an interstate, uh, where the speed limit is 65, and most of the traffic goes about 75 uh, or thereabouts. And uh, so I drove on up there, picked up my mom from the airport, and on the way back, we noticed that it smelled kind of warm. Uh, we started to smell like a I don't know, just something that was hot. I attributed it to like the same smell that burning, burning or that brakes uh, have when you have new brakes on your car, uh, or possibly a new clutch kind of burning in, <laughs> uh, or possibly brushes seating uh, on an electric motor. So anyway, uh, about halfway back, I pulled off uh, at one of the exits and it was in a uh, Burger King parking lot and we noticed that there was smoke billowing out from underneath the hood. Uh, so I, I pulled over to the side and said, oh, this isn't good at all, and took a look underneath and it turns out that the smoke was coming from the motor. Uh, didn't really have a whole lot of choices at the time. I was <laughs> still um, guessing about 15 miles from home uh, or thereabouts and just let it cool off and then drove it back um, the rest of the way. Didn't have any more smoking incident and then it was fine. So, however, since then I've noticed that the motor has been making kind of a sound I equate to bicycle spokes with like a playing card stuck in them and uh, I will go ahead and give that, give you a demonstration of that in a moment. But uh, I've got it in the garage now, up on the lift, or up on the uh, ramps, rather, so I can get underneath and take a look at uh, what's going on here. So, the first thing I noticed was there are chunks hanging down out of the uh, grill work here. And that's very reminiscent of what happened to the previous motor, uh, where it had chunks hanging out. And on the commutator side, not sure if the lights picking this up very well, um, there's quite a bit of debris caught under there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take these uh, this grill off and try to suck out all this stuff with a vacuum cleaner, um, blow it out as best I can without taking the motor completely apart or out of the car. And we'll see if that just sort of improves matters a bit. Um, the brushes, and again, I don't know how well the camera's going to make this out um, with the lighting and so forth in here, but the brushes seem to be wearing a bit unevenly. And the commutator, again, I'm not sure if I can actually pick this up, looks to not be nice and smooth. Um, it has different wear marks on it. It, it doesn't have the nice sheen 
from the branches that you would expect. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take take off the guard and have a look at inside the motor. Just maybe we can figure out what's going on there. Um, but um, before I do that, I just want to run the motor a little bit and let you hear what this thing sounds like at the moment, which is no good. <laughs> um, just going to kind of spin it here in neutral just to give you an idea. And I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. Um, now the sound that you may be able to hear in the background is the hissing of the DC to DC converter. Uh, it's done that ever since I put it in, um, I think back in July, and it's still doing it, but it also seems to still be working. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I guess, just keep on running it until it doesn't stops hissing and maybe stops working. Who knows? Um, but I'll get a close up of that. So, anyway, that is a DC to DC converter noise. Gotta love it. This silent electric vehicle with weird hissing. Um, but, alright, so now we're going to try just idling the motor again. It's in neutral and the parking brake is on. So, I don't know much, but I know that doesn't sound good. Um, ironically, the car still moves under its own power pretty well, but I'm guessing there's chunks of brushes, or maybe it threw more uh, balancing clay, or something flying around in the motor making horrible noises, and um, you know, maybe it got too hot again. That's how the last motor, uh, we, one of the theories was that the last motor broke due to it getting so hot. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull that uh, grate off of it and uh, try to get that cleaned out, and I'll be right back. Well, okay then. As you can see, we have the uh, metal guards taken off of the motor, and there's a huge pile of debris on the floor. Now, I swept this right before taking off the guards, um, so, this pile of stuff all came out of the motor, and uh, as far as I can tell, these are chunks of brush, uh, melted and sheared off, and uh, just destroyed, um, which is confirmed by the actual brushes themselves which, as you can see, are missing very large chunks. And uh, <laughs> they are they are in rough shape. <clears throat> so now these are the Helwig Carbon um, H60. And I don't know how well the camera's making that out, but they're, they're the H60 non-split top um, Helwig Carbon brushes. Um, and so I'm sure Tom Bronca uh, we'll probably have, have some interesting advice about this. My guess is he's going to say that they weren't seated in enough. And uh, I think he was saying that for these particular brushes, they should be seated in for uh, seven full days of running the motor um, at uh, like a 12, 12 volts or something in order to seat them in. Uh, these were the very brushes that Jack had on his show and seated in on camera. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Apparently that was not enough. Uh, again, I I did drive this on the drag strip out at the convention and uh, on the the dyno, and you know it it got 141 horsepower out of this motor uh, at the wheels, which I thought was pretty impressive. Uh, but at the same time, it shot sparks, and uh, that was probably a chunk of this brush material flying off and uh, igniting and com and coming out. 
Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this on the camera at all. Uh, actually, the commutator doesn't look too bad. It's not evenly, uh, like it doesn't have the brush material on it evenly, but you can see the, the copper um, of, the, of the commutator that it doesn't really look that bad. Um, I don't know if I can get the light up in here. Let's try that. Try like so, and I'll try turning the motor. And so now there are currently just two two brushes still engaged, and there's still crusty noises, which is probably those two brushes ripping along. But uh, otherwise, I don't see any major damage to the commutator. Um, it looks like just the brushes themselves blew apart and chunks flew off and, and that was that. So um, <laughs> I'm guessing I'm going to be ordering a new set of brushes. Uh, at this point I don't know what kind to get. Uh, maybe the H60 split tops again and then I'll just burn them in for seven days somehow and uh, <laughs> we'll go from there. Uh, but uh, hopefully there's no damage to the inside of the motor. I can't really tell, but I'm going to try pulling off those last two brushes and then spinning it and seeing if it makes crusty noises, um, you know, with no brushes engaged. Uh, again, I'm not sure well the camera can get this out, but I'll try to, try to do the camera underneath here a little bit. So you can see that I have the brushes out in the back as well. Oh, sorry about the crazy camera moves here. And lighting. But yeah, those are all chewed up as well. And I'm assuming that the two on top are equally chewed up. So, anyway, that's where we're at <laughs> at the moment. And uh, looks like I am in need of a new set of brushes at the very least, and possibly another new motor. So, yay! Anyway, I'll get back to y'all when I've got more uh, information. And, uh,. <laughs> we will go from there. <laughs> Take care and have a nice night.